Hello, I'm Alex Marwood and this is my new book, The Killer Next Door, and you're watching Book Zone. Alex, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. The new book sounds like a wonderful, scary movie, a dodgy rented house in South London, six strangers, each with their own demons. One of them is a murderer. Tell us a bit more about The Killer Next Door. Part of my rituals of, um, uh, for, of going down in book writing mode is that <laughs> I read a book called um, Killing for Company by Dennis Masters, um, which is a very famous uh, biography of Dennis Nilsson. Um, and uh, for some reason, I'm very fixated on this book, and I always read it as a sort of zen way of sort of getting myself into writing mode. Um, and um, one of the things about this book that's quite that, that's extraordinary and about the whole story of Dennis Nilsson is that he was living in this two very crowded houses that were full of flats and bedsits and surrounded by rotting bodies and nobody noticed. Um, and this has always sort of really fascinated me. Now also when I started the book, um, it was the middle of a heat wave and um, I live in fairly central London and you've all got your windows open and you suddenly become terribly, terribly aware of your neighbours. Um, and you know, I know which of my neighbours are not getting on and I know which of my neighbours likes to be spanked. Um, and <laughs> um, every now and then there's a terrible scream in the night and you never know if it's, you know, a drunken girl coming out of the pub or if something has actually happened. Well, your last book was very successful, The Wicked Girl. Yeah. Um, how has your life changed since then? It's amazing. Myself three years ago would honestly not believe it. I've, I've been through quite sort of big doldrum in, ter in terms of my career before I changed my name. And um, I really can't, I re I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely stunned by, it, it's, it's, it's actually almost impossible to articulate how, how stunned and thrilled I am. I actually went into a bit of a state of panic at work when, when the Wicker Girls started taking off. Um, and um, but that is beginning to calm down. But um, in every way, I think the most exciting thing that um, has happened to me in terms of personal validation was being on Stephen King's um, top 10 books of 2013 list, which he's my complete writing hero, always has been. Just getting the praise of Stephen King is really like getting a thumbs up from God, you know. Now, I understand that you threw away your desk and you do most of your writing yes. in bed. How's that working out? For it's you? fantastic, honestly. I, it was such a waste having an office. Um, I now have I now have two beds, um, uh, one of which occasionally doubles up as a spare bed. But I've always I've always basically worked in bed, partly because um, I'm I I rely quite a lot on the subconscious um, for working out what my um, what my next forward movement is. And the best way to get in there is just to roll over and go to sleep, to be honest. I'm fantastic at napping during the day. Um, so not having to actually make a decision to do that, but just sort of gra gradually, uh, you know, settle down <laughs> into the pillows and switch off, it's great. And you come from a family of writers. Do you yes. feel that you were destined to be an author, even when you were working as a temp secretary or as a door-to-door -door saleswoman? Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I always, I sort of always, I can't remember a time when I didn't think that I wanted to be a writer. Um, and um, in fact, it, it was, it, this was not a problem with my family. I think, I think my brother, who's the first person to um, work in an office in, in the last three generations, <laughs> caused much more consternation than my announcement that I was going to be a writer. Well, you've been very good and very successful at it. Alex Marwood, thank you very much indeed. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you.